Yo, what up? This is D-Night, and you're listening to the Pardon the Interaction podcast. My, oh, my, we've had so much going on. Uh, for starters, in case you missed it, we've got a new addition to the Par and Pie family, Tara Dublin. Make sure you go follow her on Twitter at Tara Dublin Rocks. Also, pick up a copy of her book while you're at it. Make, make her day, The Sound of Settling. A very fun and interesting read compared to the things we talk about on this podcast. <laughs> But yeah, we're heading toward the do or die time for the 2024 election. Go ahead and hit up JoeBiden.com. Get that man like a dollar a month or something. Help his campaign staff up and get prepared to try and save our democracy. And make sure to grab like one other person you know and tell them about the podcast. Make sure they subscribe and tune in every single week. We got a lot of things coming up for you this year. We need all the support that we can get. So if you do your part and help us grow our audience, we'll do our part and help elect Joe Biden in 2024 and save American democracy. And this is the Part of the Interaction Podcast. Yo, what up? This is D-Night and you're listening to the way I did that wrong. Uh, hey, this is- <laughs> Hey, this is D-Night. This is Carol. This is Ty. And you're listening to the Part of the Interaction podcast. The <laughs> podcast you... where D finally missed the beginning. Uh, it happened. No, he made no. fun of Ty when she missed the ending. I have been, I have been vindicated. D, nah, I'm going to tell you what happened. We start happens. like this every week. We start like this every week. <laughs> no, Carol, you're giving me a hard time, but I'm going to tell you exactly what happened. I was trying to be funny. Because if you've been listening to the podcast for like the last week and a half, you've been like, damn, it's been all D. All he does is fucking get on here and ramble. It's been all like D. I'm sick of his voice. Yeah. It's like, where are the girls? I'm ready for them to come back. Well, they're back. <laughs> so, yeah, the the way I've normally been opening the show is like, yo, what's up? This is D Knight, and you're listening to the part of the Insurrection podcast. So, I was just making fun of the fact that, that you two haven't been present for the last few episodes for various oh. reasons. Carol. Carol caught a little bug there. She was she was out of commission for a few days, so we we decided to give her a break, let her recuperate, you know, get get back to good health and such. But yeah, the band's back together. Uh, of course, you know we missed. She didn't want to hear all my all my really nice opinions about like. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, and probably, I'm against it. <laughs> yeah, probably. No, Making sure that, you know, we didn't have you coughing into the microphone on the podcast probably wouldn't have been too pleasant. Uh, we've missed out on a lot of news. I, it's, it's been nonstop, uh, unending insanity as for the usual. We'll, we'll get to that in just a moment. And before we do that, let's give a shout out to our sponsor, Colin from Sheets and Giggles sent us all some wonderful gift baskets with some fantastic sheets and other goodies in them. And I would recommend you go to sheetsandgiggles.com and pick up you a set of wonderfully fantastic soft luxurious sheets that are sustainably sourced and you know of course Colin's company does what it can to help save our planet by working with sustainable resources we've got eucalyptus source sheets and bedding and pillows we've got some links in the podcast to well rather some links in the show note to get you a pardon pod discount make sure you live in uh, wonderful, luxurious sleepy times when you go to bed every night. All right, man, it's been a crazy week. Uh, I, I guess we'll start at, uh, you know, Enrique fucking Tario, former, former leader of the proud boys. Uh, I'm, I'm fairly it's been sure a he's... crazy week. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, this is the section of the podcast that we call it's been a crazy week. Well, Carol, that section is every podcast every week. Um, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Enrique Tario, proud boy leader, uh, got sentenced the other day to a uh, whopping 22 year prison sentence for his role in the attack on the Capitol on January 6th. And I know what you're going to say. Like, damn, D, that's a lot of time. But he wasn't even at the Capitol. Why did he get so much time? Well, I, I first of all, um, for starters, apparently, it doesn't matter whether you're at the Capitol or not. The level of responsibility that that you have for your role in the attack will determine the length of your prison sentence, regardless of like your actual presence. Hey, so, D, how do you think that bodes for the other co-conspirators or people charged with similar 
relation to this incident. Well, it's funny you ask that, Carol, whether those people were at the Capitol or not on January 6th. If they help orchestrate the fucking thing, they're going to go to prison for a long ass time. A long ass time. Now, on the flip side, um, so prosecutors were asking for approximately, you know, 30 years or so. And this judge who oversaw that trial and the sentencing, uh, he has been known to engage in uh, sentencing individuals who were also involved in January 6th with significant downward departures. Uh, and I talked about that on, on a previous podcast. You can go, go check that out. Um, in this case, he didn't get nearly the sentence reduction that the others did compared to the sentencing guidelines. So I guess that's a win. I mean, I'm disappointed it wasn't longer. I feel like if you tried to overthrow the fucking government, you should get more time in jail than dudes do for drugs. So Ty, um, Tario, Enrique. Yeah. Enrique Tario. 22 years in prison. How you feeling about dude spending, you know, the next 20 years, possibly until he's like in his 60s in prison? Well, I want to know, is, Enrique, is he going to be Enrique Tario and join the Latin gang in prison? Or is he going to be um, Enrique Tario and join the white supremacist gang in prison? You know, it's funny you bring that up and because like of all the people to for like Tario to get the longest sentence, it's like the justice system still finds a way to do a racism. Right? Because the brown guy is the one who's ending up in prison with the 20 plus year sentence over everyone else. That mugshot. shot. What's the other longest? Like 18? Uh, yeah. 18. Yeah. Days. Yeah, I think so. But that mug shot. <laughs> But I posted him like so he been Sean King and like making himself like even more brown. Like who knew that to be a white person <laughs> you need to be more black? I don't know. Like that's <laughs> Yeah, that's... it was a, it was a very interesting <laughs> wait, you're talking about the one where he got the glasses on and shit. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, that's a very interesting shot there. Um very very non white looking of him. Like he he's got the old black Cuban look thing going on with his with his mug shot anyway um yeah i just i found it interesting that of course like so with these guys the proud boys of the most recent sentencings uh the judge tacked on um a terrorism enhancement because of course there is no domestic terrorist law uh but you know of course when you're convicted of a, a crime and it does uh, the sentencing guidelines do account for uh, acts of terrorism. Like even with those acts of terrorism enhancing the sentence, they still got well below the guidelines and well below what DOJ was asking for. I, and it's, it's difficult to not find that frustrating, but at the same time, I am glad at least these motherfuckers will be going away for a long time. Um, I don't know about the political, political effects that these, these prison sentences and these convictions are having. Cause I feel like it should be a fucking bigger story that like, Hey, a bunch of dudes were convicted <clears throat> of seditious conspiracy. January 6th is it's been found by numerous, numerous juries and numerous judges to been an actual coup. And people are going to jail for that. And a number of these people are in pictures with the former fucking president who was like out campaigning for president for 2024. But the media doesn't fucking care. It's wild. Totally wild. I yeah I agree like it's and it's like it's been a blip on the radar of MSM like no I'm like really like the links that they went through and what they were trying to do and when you go through the timeline and then another thing is like we're not in the jury room so what they've seen, the evidence they've seen is way more than what we get, like the pieces we get, you know? So if right. they've made that decision, like, there's a reason for it. Like, it's not just some, like, random that, oh, I don't like this guy, so I'm going to, no, like, they sat there, they listened to the evidence, they and they made that decision. And the judge made his decision on how to sentence him based on that 
Yeah, I mean, it's just I, I don't know why it's not a bigger story. I feel like it should be. Uh, I mean, obviously, again, as we told you, there's plenty going on in the news and <laughs> even uh, doing a podcast once a week is enough for that. Uh, by the way, we'll we'll be trying to do multiple episodes a week here. Um, but yeah, uh, <laughs> I just think that I mean, we could go into a, a five episode offshoot just talking about like the issues with the media. I mean, the, t- just you know, the way they try to act like everything is normal and trying to appeal to people in the middle, in this made up middle that, um, and not offend anyone. I feel like I just watch, and when I try to watch televised news, it's just kind of trash where they're like gaslighting me into thinking what they're talking about is normal. And like, um, they don't want to address any of the freaking problems. Anyway, we could go on. Yeah. I could go on for that about that for a while, but <laughs> Yeah, on that would be our endless podcast, episodes of the we podcast. We don't do right? that. <laughs> we don't. We will tell you what's fucked up. You know what? This is this is not a. It's not normal. Let's go on. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. Well, I think one of the issues with the reason why the the leader of the Proud Boys is getting sentenced to twenty twenty or 22 years hasn't popped nearly the way I thought it was is the fact that the trial wasn't televised. So that might have something like uh, the things you can see with your own eyes do typically tend to, to make uh, headlines far more than the things you have to hear secondhand reporting about. Uh, but guess what guys oh, breaking, breaking. I got eight dollars and 24 cents in child support this week. Oh my God. Congratulations. <laughs> I, okay, I think you can get, I mean, I think you can get like a happy meal or something at McDonald's with that. Um, no, but see, so as far as like televised trials go, yes, we didn't get that with the Oath Keepers. We didn't get with that with the Proud but Boys. But when are we going to get it? Well, it's funny you ask, no. Carol, because uh, one such individual charged with Rico in Georgia, which is a state court, uh, was attempting to have his case removed to federal court where cameras are not allowed. And who uh, was that man? Well, I'll get to the punchline here. That failed. So he's going to be tried in Georgia where all that shit will be on TV. And we will be watching this shit play out before us. Like the OJ trial here in just a month or not, not with Mark Meadows per se, but um, yeah. So Mark Meadows, uh, a, filed a motion to have his case removed to federal court based on the fact that at the time of, um, you know, January 6th, uh, where he's being charged in, in Georgia that during that time he was a federal officer and there's a federal statute. Basically it's, it's intended to protect federal officers from, uh, the abuses of say state officials, um, you know, attempting to interfere with the federal government. Well, in, in this case, it was the federal government. Well, the state of Georgia needs protection from the federal government, or at least when, <laughs> when Trump was in charge, because they were attempting to illegally overturn the election. Well, um, Meadows made a number of asinine arguments about how he was just doing his job and the things that he was being charged for were part of his job. Therefore, he should be tried in federal court. And the judge was like, bro, you you said half of the shit you was doing was basically for the campaign. Get this shit the fuck up out of here. Back to state court. You go. Um, uh, the, the most important implications for this are that. If Meadows can't get his case removed to federal court, he had the best possible argument of all the individuals involved in January 6th that have been charged with RICO in Georgia. And I guess that means at this point, no one's going to have their case removed. So everyone. And that's go- why in this version of the OJ trial, the white Bronco <laughs> is a bunch of <laughs> is a bunch of ridiculous filings. Just a bunch of frivolous legal filings. Just keep throwing them at the cops so they can't catch you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, they've already turned themselves in once. So, yeah, the chase is going to be a little less fun uh, this go around. But so given that Meadows is stuck in Georgia, that also means that Trump is stuck in Georgia. And that also means that Cheeseboro, Sydney Cheeseboro, Sydney Powell, all them other fuckers, are stuck in Georgia, which means that we will get a televised trial uh, 
for each of those individuals. That, that is going to be like total shit. Oh, it's going to be fucking insane. Uh, but the thing is, as we were discussing with the Proud Boys and Oath Keepers, given the fact that their trials weren't test or televised nationally or at all for that matter, um, it, but they, it seemed to just not make any headway in the media, we're definitely not going to have that problem uh, in Georgia. I feel like this thing will be the most watched. I mean, it'll be the most watched thing since OJ, I would imagine. Has there been anything else that's ever gotten more media coverage than that? I feel like no. I mean, we'll be watching that shit like it's the fucking Super Bowl. I, I don't know. That's true. Where yeah. we are. <laughs> if you can't tell, I'm glad football is back. I missed you. Like, there's been nothing <laughs> on but baseball for months. Like, I've been dying. <laughs> Yeah, he's really missed it. He's like, Carol, do you want, do you like fantasy football? And I'm like, what about me? And our, <laughs> our any of our conversations led you to believe that I'd be, no, 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 no. Okay. Find thing, someone else. The thing there is I was potentially going to start up a fantasy football league for you all, the listeners, to come join us and play against us on a weekly basis. But, you know, Carol's not into football, so maybe next year. Um, I'm having a fantasy theater league where I get together with my friends and sing through musicals. But Dee doesn't want to drive to New York and be in Sweeney Todd. Yeah, that's this is a it's a little more feasible to do like online football than than it is to do in life, like in person theater. So, but yeah. So we're going to get our nationally televised trial in Georgia of Trump and all his Rico cohorts, although it appears as though we won't be getting them all at the same time. Uh, so Kenneth Cheesebro and Sidney Powell have have moved or well, made motions to to. Um, <laughs> They're going to have to play one defendant at a time at all the different ESPNs. <laughs> 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 extreme court <laughs> oh my god that's so good oh extreme courts well Sidney Powell and Kenneth Cheesebro filed a motion to exercise their right to a speedy trial and um, of course Fonnie Willis was like cool gotcha see you in October and <laughs> <laughs> well, that's not a suitable date for all of Trump and well, Trump and his co-defendants, because not everyone wants to have their trial take place as soon as possible. Um, so there, the judge is going to be looking at whether or not everyone will be tried in a similar fashion. I expect, given that uh, a filing last week by Fonnie Willis office saying that, you know, requesting your right to a speedy trial will uh be waiving some of your rights when it as it pertains to the discovery process. Trump's going to use that as an argument as to why he shouldn't be testified along with the cheese bro and pal and, and probably others will, will do the same. So I think Fonnie Willis got too cute by half on that. She, she gave Trump a way out or at least the opportunity to delay. But um, apart from that, um, also it, it appears as though, Cheesebro looked around at his at present company, Sidney Powell, and was like, wait a second, she wants her speedy trial, uh, but we don't need to be tried together. Um, his, <laughs> it, it seems as though his lawyer was in court the other day. I don't that- actually know her that well. Um, <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, <laughs> so t- the two major arguments Cheesebro's lawyer was making in an attempt to have his his uh, trial separated from Sidney Powell like, is that was crime. This is personal. It was one <laughs> oh, <laughs> argument. Number one was like, Hey man, I don't really know this hoe. And argument number two was like, <laughs> have you seen her? She fucking crazy. She going to get me locked up. Like if we try together. Her. Um, and, and that's, I, you, you think I'm joking, but that is actually like the practical. That's very similar to my joke. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, The reality Um, is very close to the joke. Yeah. Yeah. So here's the thing. When it comes to conspiracies, you don't actually have to know everyone involved in the conspiracy. And, and that kind of eliminates one of the arguments as far as cheese bro is concerned. Like he, he doesn't actually need to know, no pal at all really to be a part of the conspiracy. Uh, if not even found guilty. And I'll give you an example. Two spokes can be on opposite sides of a wheel. Yeah. <laughs> the middle blocks them. They never even need to know that, you know, right. they the, don't. 
The left hand doesn't even need to know what the right hand is doing. So I'll give you an example of a very practical and easily, easily understandable conspiracy. All right. You got a, a group of guys, um, plotting to rob a bank. You've got the ring leader. You've got the guy who cracks the safe. You've got the guy who just, you know, keeps security from, um, pressing the alarm button. Uh, you've got the guy who bags up the money and you've got the getaway driver. You've got the guy who buys the guns and all the supplies, right? All, most of these individuals don't even have to have met each other to take plot or take part in the criminal conspiracy, right? Like the getaway driver doesn't need to know the guy who cracks the safe and the guy who cracks the safe doesn't need to know the guy who bought the mask and who bought the guns and who cased the joint, right? All these people can play their separate roles as part of this larger. They don't need to. They want to. <laughs> I mean, they can. We're not, we're not saying it's mutually <laughs> exclusive. Um, so, <laughs> right. and the thing is, so once you've entered into the uh, agreement to rob the bank, if one person takes one over act towards um, taking a step to rob the bank, that means that everyone involved is now guilty of the criminal conspiracy. And I'll give you uh, yet another example. So everyone, oh, another analogy, the same exact one I gave before when one spoke on a wheel starts turning, yeah. they all turn and the it's, whole wheel turns. Yes, you know, that's the, the, the analogy that, I, well, it's not, that's, you know, the classic analogy for a conspiracy. <laughs> you crushed it. So the guy who, so the guy who's like, all right, I'm going to go buy the guns and the ski mask, you know, Swipes his credit card on the fucking eBay. Uh, the the mass are coming. He goes down to the gun show, grabs a couple guns. Boom. Everybody who agreed to take part in the bank robbery is now guilty. Now, this is not quite the equivalent of what's going on in Georgia, because in in this case, they actually made it to the bank, tried to rob the funky bank and, and just ran off before they could get into the safe with the money. So they they. They actually attempted to rob the bank figuratively in this case. They just didn't get away with any money. Um, so the uh, argument in that, my analogy, the handbrake was being squeezed, <laughs> <laughs> but you could still tell the bike was trying to move. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. okay. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> so Cheese Bros argument that hey, I don't even really know Sydney Powell. Like, what am I doing here? Um, <laughs> yeah, what, like get me up out of here. Like that argument is moot. Like they they don't have to have any connection. And in fact, like <laughs> it makes it more plausible that they're being tried together as being separate arms of the same conspiracy to commit similar crimes. Um. As for his argument, the city pal's a fucking crazy bitch. Like, yeah, bro, you didn't have to enter into this conspiracy uh, if, like, you you chose your own bad mate on this one. Sorry, bro. It's your own fault. Um, Never promise crazy a baby. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I mean, don't, yeah, this just... <laughs> Oh, so I don't know how many of you are familiar with the the previous Mueller investigation, the Russia investigation in Trump's 2016 election shenanigans. But um, Andrew Wiseman, who was like one of the lead prosecutors on Mueller's team, was telling a story uh, about his previous involvements with Sidney Powell and how she kept. Well, so she was in court on, I imagine, what were some civil charges. And um, she kept on filing these crazy motions to. I don't know, have the, I, I don't know. I, I actually don't know what the fuck she was doing. She just wanted the judge to like talk bad to Wiseman and his team or something, something crazy. And they were like, what is wrong with this fucking crazy bitch? She keeps following all these motions and she keeps losing. It's like, is she crazy? And, and he's like, man, the world needs to know how crazy this, this crazy heifer is. And lo and behold, Wiseman and crew got their wish because now we all know she's fucking bonkers. <laughs> Even her own co defendant is like, this bitch so crazy, she's gonna get me locked up. Uh, <laughs> yeah. 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 And that should let you know the state of affairs when it came uh, to why Trump's 20, 
20 plot didn't work. Like, look at the team he was working with. These fuckers can't Go even to get sleep legal- with dogs. You get fleas, right? That's the expression. I like these analogies oh. you're coming with. Are, are you analogy that's an girl expression. No, that's an expression. Well, no, okay. lie down with dogs, get the fleas. Dogs get up with fleas. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm familiar with, with the dogs. expression. Okay. But you, yes. Yeah, You're providing all of them today. Like, do you have any more? Yes. I, any other good ones? Probably when they, when the mood strikes and the context is right. Um, this just got when very the mood intimate. the strikes and the context is right. <laughs> um, it's been a while since <laughs> the context was right for me, so um, you're speaking my language here. But yeah, good luck to Cheese Thank Bro. You. That's what my song needed. <laughs> <laughs> good luck to Cheese Bro getting away from Sydney Powell. Uh, I don't think it's going to happen. The judge is probably going to look like at these arguments like, hey, this is fucking asinine. I mean, and the federal judge looked at Mark Meadows like, hey, this is fucking crazy. Get the fuck out of here. Go back to Georgia. This judge is going to be like, uh, cheese, bro. Get the fuck out of here. You're going to trial with Sidney Powell. Like, we're not going to waste time and resources on having multiple concurrent trials, multiple juries. Like, the the headache involved with that just necessitates that, that these two will be tried together. If if not, more have more individuals join them. Um, I think... Given the fact that Cheeseboro's trial, uh, along with Sidney Powell, is going to take place in, I would assume, before November, or at least the beginning of the trial, before November, I mean, this thing is going to play a hectic but massive role in the GOP primary, and I'll tell you why. Um, It's one thing to have Trump and his people argue uh, in public, uh, you know, about their their lack of guilt when it concerns these charges. It's another thing entirely to have, like, the whole nation, like, descend upon their televisions to watch the trial play out and see the evidence unfold before them in real time. Like, that's that's a totally different experience. Now, obviously, since being indicted multiple times, you know, Trump has solidified his support in the Republican Party. Uh, he's polling well ahead of everyone at this point so i'm not saying it's at all likely that he won't be the GOP nominee but i'm just saying that this trial could potentially be the the beginning of a downslide as far as his support is concerned maybe just maybe um you know fox news the republican slash right wing media apparatus and the donors and the public at large will all start to question whether or not he can even win a popular well rather win a general election uh, and they'll have plenty of time to consider that before they even cast the first votes in the primary next year. Who knows? I'm not saying that's going to happen. Not even saying slightly, just saying it's a possibility. Um, the other thing. Oh. Sorry, I'm old. But, but... <laughs> oh, Sorry. I mean, obviously it's not good optics. You start to wonder at what point his, I mean, his voters aren't going to care about that at all. Um, um, it's just. Well, when, I think Carol. Oh, all right. So do his voters care that he's been indicted? Uh, yes. Does that mean they won't vote for him? No. But I think no. what his voters are doing is they're sitting around waiting for Republicans who are already in office, along with Fox News and and the right wing media outlets that they trust to stop telling them that it's okay to keep supporting Trump. Uh, and, and, you know, the second those like those people and those outlets bail on Trump, Republican voters will be like, okay, maybe it'll be time for us to bail on Trump. The problem there is, is they're stuck in this fucking, you know, unending time loop where the media outlets and Republic, uh, you know, elected Republicans are like, well, we won't bail on Trump until the voters do until the GOP voters do. So everyone's like waiting for the other one. So they're it's the prisoner's dilemma, right? They don't want to break first. You know, Republicans <laughs> in Congress don't want to break on Trump first. Cause That's Trump will just have them primaried. That was okay. what my professor said and called the prisoner's dilemma. So that was, uh, yeah. Basic game theory. Um, right. So, 
So you think about Republicans who need Trump support to stay in office in 2024. If they break with Trump first, Trump will have them primary and the voters will just like kick them out of office in favor of some more crazy fuckers. Um, Fox News is like, well, if we bail on Trump, then Trump will just go over to fucking Newsmax slash Tucker Carlson's Twix show. Um, right. So it's not in their immediate best interest to to try and turn on Trump in favor of pushing the public to other candidates. Uh, but of course, the problem here is if Trump is nearly guaranteed to lose a presidential election, then you're backing a guaranteed loser. You're, you're pot committed behind someone who's going to tank your chances anyway. Which um, is why no labels is coming because they know that Trump is an unhinged psychopath. Well, uh, so but no, they want him to win. It seems like okay. So no labels. Their issue is, I don't know if anyone's like I don't I don't know anyone who's ever whoever brings this up. But like the problem with the third party presidential candidacy is if you can't win a primary in either party, you can't win the fucking presidency. And I'm like, oh no, it's not possible. D like so we got hope for third parties. Well, not not to win a presidential election, you don't. And I'll tell you why, because think about like if it's just a Republican candidate versus just a Democratic candidate, like you're going to need a majority of votes in all likelihood. If you're a Democrat, just a majority in the um, in the popular vote, just to even have a chance to win an electoral college. Uh, If you're a Republican, you're going to need to win every single small red state to rack up the electoral college wins to account for the fact that you're likely not going to win the popular vote. Right. Well, if you're a third party, well, you're going to have to get to 270 electoral college votes. First of all, because if you don't guess who gets to choose who won the election, Congress does. Right. So you're going to have to win enough States to get 270 electoral college votes. Well, that means you're going to have to win uh, States where like that lean super blue, where the Democratic candidate is probably super popular. You're going to have to beat that guy in his states. But not only that, you're going to have to win some red states too. So you're going to have to be more popular than the Republican candidate in the states where they're most popular. You see how the math doesn't add up there? And that's what like places like uh, parties like No Labels and the Green Party won't tell you is that their candidates are doomed from the get-go. It's it's all a fucking grift to either... Uh, you know, receive, uh, I don't know, to fund themselves on donor money and or to tank uh, the election in favor of one candidate over another. And no labels, I'm sure, has seen the same polling I have that says that the election is close and Biden's favored to win uh, when it's just him and Trump. If you introduce a third party candidate on a no labels ticket, you change the numbers in such a way uh, that fewer Democrats are going to vote for Biden. They're going to choose the no labels ticket and Republicans are still going to come out and support Trump and Trump's going to win swing States and probably win the white house. Like, and if they haven't told you that, uh, that's like, you, you can like the information is available. You can Google it yourself. The fact that they won't come out and tell you the truth just proves that they're basically Jill Stein 2.0. And the same thing. Yeah, goes, and also the fact that they've the the candidate they've put out is batshit crazy. <laughs> um, well, no <laughs> labels has hasn't hasn't put out a candidate yet, but they're it's not RFK. No, Junior? okay. So I, I would have thought it was um, JFK. Because honey, crazy. that's that's what Republicans think. JFK <laughs> Junior is dead, baby. His brain uh, splattered no, alongside the JF- concrete. Huh? Oh, junior. Yeah, juniors. Well, oh. see, senior would be like a hundred and ten. 
Yeah, but they thought he was. Weren't they like waiting for him to come next year? Oh my god! Last year that was someone when they were in Texas. Yeah, that and they insane. were like, and he's been resurrected. Like, and he's been alive because Jesus resurrected him. And I'm like, okay, but still, even if you could suspend disbelief about all of that, he'd be like 102. Yeah. And then, like, what the hell do you think he's gonna? He'd be like, why have you brought me back to life? Let me die. <laughs> <laughs> Terrible. But no, it's just funny because your automatic association of RFK oh, Jr. with what up, yo? You're so tall. Yeah, it's crazy how tall you got. Like, what happened? You like just woke up one day and you were six foot tall. Yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah, I was like, what the fuck? Look at how. Look you, at how he, tall, used to, look he used to be shorter than you. He <laughs> would be like at your boobs. He was boob height, and now. Yeah. Yeah. That no, you're you're at his shoulders. Um, your hair looks nice. Both of your hair looks nice. Did you all get your hair done? My um, hair, my hair probably doesn't look nice because I've been outside at work oh, all day. Good. And it's good. It's looking fresh. It's looking um, fresh. All right. Anyway, but yeah, no. So Carol, it's funny and interesting that you make the automatic association uh, between RFK Jr. and JFK Jr. And I think that's the only reason why. Uh, oh, she said that. oh, I thought you said that was Jeff, Ty. You didn't say JFK oh. Jr. That was Ty. Oh, oh yeah. Okay. Uh, well, it's Ty. It's funny that you make the association between RFK Jr. and JFK <laughs> Jr. Um, because I think that's what the Republicans who were bagging him are counting on that. You just see the, the Kennedy junior part. You're like, Oh, he's yeah. like JFK. And Kennedy, he's the totally that's opposite. It. Yeah. That's all. No. Yeah. He's not the no labels candidate. What he is, is like the Republicans attempt to undermine Biden in a democratic primary. Oh, what is going on? Okay. Who is the no labels candidate going to be like Andrew Yang or he's in the forward party driving off a cliff? <laughs> yeah. Um, Remember the forward car? Yeah. <laughs> oh, Jesus. No. So the no labels ticket is eyeing a, a young senator from West Virginia. You you may have heard oh, of him. I, right, I'm whatever. sorry. Let's, I'm not. No. I'm not familiar. Let's. With that guy. Let's. Just y'all don't want to talk about Joe Manchin. Sure. Oh no, he's that guy. No. Oh. No, I don't want to give him. Was Joe Manchin? You meant Joe Manchin? No. I forgot yeah. about him. So no labels is courting. No labels. Oh, it's courting. definitely just a scam for money then. Yeah, they're courting Joe Manchin for a, a unity ticket. He he'd be the leading candidate. Unity. He'd have a Republican. <laughs> Running mate, yeah, and this is their, this is their attempt. semantics. Semantics, it drives me fucking nuts. Unity ticket, yeah, <laughs> but I mean, like I said, like I previously explained, the unity ticket is the fuckery ticket. Like it, it, yes, it would only tank Biden, and it would get Trump back in the White House, and hopefully, uh, you know, I know that Joe Manchin is intelligent enough to understand that. I gotta go pee. I'm gonna. <laughs> my god it's so hard to do this podcast when ty is drunk and she she turned off her and the video but not the sound <laughs> even though presumably you're not peeing in the kitchen that's true oh yeah, you can still hear you are you taking the laptop with you Turn off the sound. Just leave it that way. Just, no, just leave it. Just leave the sound yeah. on. If you're, if you're peeing. And listeners, if you're wondering what it sounds like when I Ty know. goes peeing, I'm, I'm that's going to cost you extra, <laughs> and it will be edited out, so you're going to have to request the footage from D for a small donation to the podcast. No, we're not showing footage of Ty peeing um, on YouTube it's just, or anything. It's just a sound clip. No, I'm going to pass. I mean, if Ty was listening and 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 cohesive enough she would have muted it by now <laughs> um yeah but so okay just, fine we won't exploit our drunk friends fine just say yeah but anyway just say no to no labels and the green party and rfk jr actually actually it's funny and the because, unity party well yeah <laughs> well i think the unity party is dead and so was rfk jr's campaign because he went he said all that crazy shit 
um, a couple of weeks ago, and you've noticed no one's talked about him since. I guess sometimes he, you only notice what you don't yeah. notice what you don't notice. Yeah, he went full like, you know, full anti-Semitic Nazi type shit and got caught on it and poof. You know, he disappeared from media coverage. It was crazy. Um, I ain't forgot. I just don't bring him up because, like, I don't want to give him any fucking attention. Right. Yeah. Anyway. <clears throat> um, beyond, the next topic? beyond that nonsense there, Peter Navarro yesterday uh, was convicted Peter on a Navarro. couple of counts of contempt of Congress for his refusal to come in and testify to the January 6th committee about their investigation into Trump's attempt to overturn the 2020 election. Part of the reason he got fucking hammered and other people who like didn't cooperate with the committee, but at least came in and testified uh, or invoked their fifth amendment privilege rather is that they actually came in and the questions were asked and they invoked their fifth amendment privilege. Like, that's the bare minimum. Like it, there are some cases in which you can't come in and claim these, make these ridiculous privilege claims like Navarro was doing. Um, you can still potentially be charged with um, contempt of Congress. Uh, but he didn't even do that. He didn't even come in and try to make the arguments. He was just like, I'm a certain, you know, executive privilege. I ain't coming in. Fuck your questions. <laughs> fuck your committee. And DOJ was like, bro, that's not an option. Uh, similar set of, <laughs> si- that's sim- not how that works here, bro. Yeah. Similar <laughs> set of circumstances with none other than Trump's other former campaign manager, uh, the walking death. He he looks like he has, uh, I don't know what's wrong with this face. Maybe he's been in Florida and he's got, um, um, wait, I'm sorry. What's going around in Florida again? Uh, leprosy. leprosy. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> leprosy for infra- crumbling infrastructure nazism uh, well crumbling uh, infrastructure isn't contagious but yeah steve bannon is also the other individual who, who's been convicted of contempt of congress uh, appealing his prison sentence here but yeah so uh the trial was short uh doj was like bro here's the subpoena here's you not showing the fuck up I rest my case. Uh, Navarro's defense team was like, we rest our case. They didn't put on a, a defense, none whatsoever. Uh, and the ju- the jury deliberated for basically minutes. It was like, bro, you guilty. Take your ass to jail. Um, I don't know. Let's see. Sentencing, the sentencing, uh, it's up to a year in jail per count and up to $100,000. Well, yeah, he's not going to get a year. Per count. He'll- He'll probably get something along the lines of four to six months. Um, not per. Well, I'm just telling you what it, it. I just was looking at this a few minutes ago. And I'm just mentioning it. Yeah, no, but I'm just saying that, like, in terms of what the judge will probably do, he'll probably get four to six months uh, per count serve concurrently. So you know, it's something similar along the lines of of Steve Bannon. Um, <laughs> just part of the insanity of this is that, like it's not only that Navarro refused to come in and testify, even if only to assert, you know, executive privilege, even though, you know, Trump wasn't the president at the time of the subpoena and Biden was the president and Biden was like, you know, I, I'm not asserting executive privilege here. Um, the fact that he was like on fucking TV talking about the shit, but couldn't go before the committee is just pretty fucking damning. Like, I, I don't know if you were, um, listeners, if you were, paying attention at the time but around the time of the subpoena uh he went on Ari Melber's show on MSNBC and and basically admitted <laughs> he he just basically admitted to a criminal conspiracy and Melber was like don't you realize that what you just admitted to was a coup and and, <laughs> oh, you know, yeah. and Navarro was like no no it wasn't <laughs> <laughs> it was crazy. But then like he was like immediately subpoenaed by the J6 committee like a week after that and didn't show up. So you could come talk about the shit on TV, but you think you have the right to ex- um assert executive privilege even though well, the level not- of hubris with all these guys just it just skyrocketed. Oh, it's crazy. It. Like even after they were out of power, they seemed to be 
they had this level of confidence that they were still somehow going to pull it off. I mean, maybe they still, maybe they, maybe they still will fucking, you know, because of no labels, but <laughs> get a, yeah. get some the assumption, power. But let's. Well, the assumption yeah. there is yes, they think Trump's going to win in 2024. Uh, and we even had one of the proud boys after his sentencing last week, uh, basically phone in to, uh, I th- believe it was Alex Jones' show talking about how he believed that Trump was going to issue a part, issue him a pardon. So he thinks he's got his get out of jail free card coming. And I think a number of these people involved in this same plot think the same thing, even though Trump was the fucking president after January 6th for another two weeks and didn't pardon anyone involved. So you could have gotten your pardon. He just didn't. So I don't understand why they believe that. Yeah, but in his defense, he doesn't care about anyone but himself. (laughs) It's a good point, Carol. I'm glad you made it. But yeah, are you noticing? uh, So apparently the theme of this podcast here is um, Trump's cohorts losing in court. You know, it's, it seems to be a regular occurrence here. Uh, just the fact that they keep ma- filing these motions or, or, or keep ending up in court and they continue to lose convictions. Um, Fucking losers. Um, yeah, having losers. their motions dismissed, having their cases remanded back to state court, uh, you know, having serious uh, prison sentences handed down by judges. It's It's all going bad for them. And expect more of that to continue and expect that once Trump does eventually go to trial, uh, he'll end up in a same or rather he'll end up in a similar situation. Whew. All right, kids. Do you have a shithole of the week award by any chance? Die, this is for you. Do you have a shithole <laughs> of the week? Award? You have a shithole of the week award um, nominee? Tommy fucking Tuberville. Say it again, Ty. Tommy fucking Tuberville, Tuberville, whatever, however the hell you say it. What what he be doing? His holding up the single handedly crippling our military by doing what? By holding up the nominations of over three hundred servicemen and women is disgusting as fuck. I am taking this personally because I am a daughter of veterans. I have a family of veterans. I have friends who are veterans and they stand by their active duty servicemen and service women. It is disrupting Morale, recruitment, to keep our military the strongest that it can be. It is fucking disgusting. And every time I see his smirking face, which legacy media should not be amplifying, I want to fucking punch him. (laughs) I want to fucking punch him. He has never served a day in his life of service. He couldn't even fucking get Auburn to victory. Okay. They lost to. Hey, now you say that, but like they, they were losing to Alabama before he got there. (laughs) It's a joke. I keep going. That that's his record. That's who he is. He is garbage. Yeah, absolute fucking trash, and it angers me in ways that I can't even explain. And that, honestly, I would want CNN, MSNBC, everybody to just not even entertain him because this is the most attention that he's gotten for anything in his fucking mediocre. Miserable. white man life yeah 
Yeah, and, he's he's fucking up the military, and that's the crazy part. You know, the Republicans claim, oh, we love our troops, support the troops, blah, blah, blah. And then you have no Republicans, no Republicans defending the military from Tommy Tuberville's insanity. Yes. Uh, no, and they're putting American security at risk. Absolutely. And not one of them has, they have not. Navy ain't got no commandant. When was the last time we ain't had no commandant? I couldn't tell you what century. Yeah, all time Look, I'm not a here. war hawk or anything, <laughs> but like they're supposed to be. I thought they're going to they're And you know, this is just like a prelude to them being like Biden is military is weak. And like he didn't act on this event. We just allowed to happen. Hopefully not. God forbid. Um, <laughs> yeah. Something crazy is going to happen revolving a, a poor response from the, the military chain of command. And then he's going to blame it on Biden. I want to the, the shit that... out of that motherfucker. I'm not even, I'm sorry. Yep. Can unanimous we... consent. Yeah. Tommy Tuberville, you're here by award of the shit hole of the week award. Like, fuck you. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. I'm sick of his face as well. I didn't. I didn't like him when he was coaching college football. I really dislike him now, uh, and I can imagine all those black kids that you know he built his career on the backs of. I can only imagine how they feel about him now. All right, uh, <laughs> Carol, you have any closing thoughts? I guess I kind of blew it in my street about the mainstream media. <laughs> you, you you can continue on um, on that thread. It's fine. Go. Oh, I just wish that I could see. More from, I wish I could just see more journalists. It's sad to see the real uh, thoughtful and um, shit, principled here, journalists. I hate to steal your thunder here, Carol. marginalized, but what? Well, I just wanted to say, like, the one thing that pisses me off the most about how the media tackles at least politics in in between the two political parties is like it would be as though if like uh, you were me on the side of two plus two equals four and the Republican Party was on the side of two plus two equals five and the media <laughs> reports it like, well, Republicans say two plus two equals five and Democrats say two plus two equals four. But <laughs> they like don't point Next out the guess, op- some kids who are bad at math <laughs> give their thoughts at a diner. Well, no, they just lend credibility to this obviously insane, factually incorrect party operating in bad faith as though they're not obviously insane. And they right. So, but it bothers me that the ones who are actually principled and, and scrupled and, and like get all their shit in line, those are the marginalized journalists. And the ones who are front and center are the ones who are like complacent in the normalizing of all this terrible shit and yeah, giving credence to fake information. So I wish I had a solution to that besides listen to our podcast. We will never lie to you. (laughs) We might get (laughs) stuff wrong, but we're not going to be outright spreading misinformation. We won't do it on purpose or, or both sizing, uh, both sizing one when one side is clearly operating in good faith and the other side is fucking terrorists. We we, we won't do that for you. Uh Ty, you got any closing thoughts? Just, Ty had Ty had one too many drinks, so bear with Ty. I did. <laughs> Give me one margarita. I'm gonna do my podcast. <laughs> Give me two margarita. I will be slightly less good at my podcast. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, but honestly, lie down like, on the couch. <laughs> I am so disappointed <laughs> in where we are today as a country. I need everyone to pay attention. What's going on in education? What's going on in Florida? What's going on with the incorporating of prayer you and like that's something that's been really heavily on my mind. And what was the what? Okay, okay, the ants. Chris, have you seen anything from school from PragerU or the nine one seven society? Well, he is in Texas now. All right, good. Okay. <laughs> but you tell your I, mother. Okay, but I just really like want like it is so infuriating to me, and I don't. Understand 
But I want to make sure they die. Okay, kill them. Okay. Kill the ants. Kill the ants. You know how I feel about the ants. Fuck yeah. them ants. But spare the uncles. Because <laughs> I, I I have you the cousins. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Do you even remember what, what were we were? talking about? Yeah. <laughs> We are yeah. such a hot mess. Bray, you're you. Your son Bray, is not you. receiving this propaganda at no. school yet. I and mean, I told him to no. tell no. you. No. All the problems He's in America. Not. You you were going down the list of problems in America. Continue. Yeah, but we'll I did ask all night. Him, like, what would you do or say if they were, you know, Chris is all about history and, you know, whatever. Bro, if my teacher tried to teach me slavery was awesome, I would beat that motherfucker's ass. Anyway, sorry. <laughs> All right. I apologize. All right. Do we need to do okay. take? All right. Take three. Ty's close. Th- three, two, one. All right, Ty, you have any closing? Face. That's not a good closing thought. Um, <laughs> three, two, one. Hey, Ty, you have any closing thoughts? I want to smash my son's face. All there. right. Yep. Um, child abuse. Great closing thought. Um, my closing thoughts here, since, you know, of course, Ryan DeSantis is ineligible for the shithole of the week award because he's won too many times. Uh, he's like on the all time uh, leading. Well, he's one of the all time leaders. He's won one too many times. Yeah. You know, once you win three times, you're you're no longer uh, qualified to run for the shithole of the week award. Uh, but yeah, of course, uh, there was that unfortunate, tragic shooting uh, in, was it Orlando a couple of weeks ago? Jacksonville. It was in Jacksonville. You're so right. I don't know why I said Orlando. I just, there's there's so much going on in Florida. It's hard to keep up with what city is what. Yeah, there was that unfortunate shooting in Orlando a couple of weeks ago at the Dollar General store uh, where they had radicalized individual targeted a bunch of, of black people. Uh, you know, once he was turned away from the HBCU down there. Um, and of course, you know, days later, Ron DeSantis broke away from the campaign to come back to Florida. And he was at a press conference where he, you know, talked about how it was such a tragic situation and people who engaged in that kind of behavior were terrible and blah, blah, blah. And he would do his best to support his constituents. And, you know, I assume he, work within his powers to support the black community, you know, since we were often the victims of these tragedies, I guess he felt the, the, the need to kind of come out here and, and play as though he hasn't been involved in saying racist remarks similar to the ideologies that motivated the shooter. Well, of course, the hurricane hit Florida last week, and one of the things that he did was he got on TV and and immediately resorted to the implications that black people are somehow unruly and, 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 and engage in criminal activity. And when the looting, he, he, he alluded to uh, the saying, you know, when the looting starts, the shooting starts. So just a week after, uh, you know, professing his support for the black community, he gets out here and makes these racist, violent allusions that often lead to more violence against black people. It's like instant amnesia. The thing he said a week ago, no longer matters. And and he's back to the racist, violent rhetoric. That's absolutely going to get more people killed. I guarantee you it's going to happen. It's unfortunate. I can predict it now. I'm telling you, uh, you can just place your money on it. Like it's more guaranteed than, than Patrick Mahomes, you know, throwing for three touchdowns and winning the Super Bowl. I mean, you know, granted, he did lose yesterday, but yeah, man, just like the insanity of how we let these people come out here and straight lie to our faces and gaslight us. And then the very next week, they revert back to showing that the true colors. I mean, it's just, it's just, Endless examples, Ron DeSantis being the latest. I hate these fucking people. Uh, I hope we make sure they lose in 2024. We can't ever let these people back in office. And that concludes this episode of Part of the Insurrection.